We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Howdy. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun. Today, Jill and I talk about glamping and how some of our members are cash flowing with it. This is a huge, mile-long topic, and rightfully so in Discord. Uh, and everybody chimed in. I can tell when it's a good topic in Discord because people that are just lurking, mm -hmm. they start piping in. They're like, oh yeah, this is, there's people in there. So this is why I joined Land Academy. This is, and they, then they're giving us as an example, five, dollar, five miles down the road, this is what this person is doing in, in their unused cow pasture. Do you think what we do is a version of glamping? No, not at all. Okay. Oh yeah, I think it can be, but I'll explain it. Okay, good. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. And don't forget to subscribe on the Land Academy YouTube channel and comment on the shows that you like. Aaron wrote, Airbnb, VRBO, glamping, anyone here ever leased their land to Airbnb campsite operators. Getting $135 a night for a tent with a composting toilet and an outdoor shower. I've been watching some YouTube videos about people buying or leasing lands near natural attractions for these style campsites. I have some lots that could be used for this. Any thoughts? Go. Oh, sorry. Nellie wrote, I've been looking at these for a while. $40,000 canvas tents. Yikes. You can rent out campsites on your property with hip camp also. Been thinking about doing that on the three acre lot that I live on, cleaning up an area near the pond to rent out to campers. Maybe do a deliverance experience for Halloween. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I have to tell you, Natalie, if you've ever seen deliverance, nobody's going to pay for a deliverance experience. Most of you who are my age know exactly what I'm talking about, and you're laughing in your cereal right now. I don't. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> I've not seen deliverance, and I'm just, uh, deliberately. Yeah, deliverance is not for you. That's what I mean. There's no singing and dancing or right. anything like that. Yeah, no happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> like who's still alive, basically, at the end? <laughs> so I put this question in here. Uh, it's not really not even a question. I mean, I think the real <clears> question <throat> is, has, has anybody thought about this? And everybody responded and said, not only have I thought about it, it's happening down the street and all of that. So because it is a topic, we'll just get right into it. Okay. Today's topic, glamping and some and how some of our members are cash flowing with it. This is the meat of the show. Glamping is the combination of two words, glamour and camping. So... It really depends on who you talk to and where they're coming from in life. But there are some people, and I used to be one of these people, uh, I think Jill did too, where, look, I just want to stay at a five-star hotel and order some room service and jump in the pool. Oh, I, I, I Any part of I, camping. I still have those days, and like so today. <laughs> I've slept probably, unless there's grandchildren in my distant future, this way distant future, I've spent my last night in a tent. You know, oh. not, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm right. not talking about pitching a tent like a soldier and, and eating an MRE and uh, down in a uh, with half pint of whiskey and go to sleep. I'm, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about glamping, which is these, I mean, picture a, f a fully produced movie from the eighties or nineties where they're in the, some desert on an archeological dig and they've got this an amazing tent with the desks in it and servants and all, you know, that's what glamping is now in this country. It's dropping a, these really cool pre-made structures uh, with beds in them and mosquito nets and, and refrigerators and all the kind of stuff. It's glamor camping and it's the thing. And I, I think personally it's here to stay. I haven't done it yet, but I want to do it. So it's not, it's, is it always tent related or is it our, can it be RV related? So Jill, Jill keeps asking, do we glamp? Do we glamp? We have a brand new, well, pretty swanky RV, a little one, but it's swanky. I, I, I've heard it described that way, but I don't think okay. so. Okay. So I don't think, I think I mean, for the purposes camping of what we're really talking camping, about now, like you're not, you don't have a toilet. Yeah. This show, well, compost toilet. Okay. That kind. This, uh, or an outhouse, this, right. this episode is about buying a piece of land right? or maybe land you already own, like the person in the, uh, in the question and clearing it, putting some of these tents up, maybe putting somebody in charge and, and charging $130, $150 a night for the experience. Hopefully it's on a river or there's fishing or, or ATV or kayaking or some, something active to do. 
to attract people there, or it's near some type of monument. So the, people go on in this string and talk about this stuff's all over Yosemite and Idaho and everywhere. Tell me what I can weigh in on my ideas on this. And then I'm going to get to the math and right. why the math really works on this. Go ahead. So here's my initial thoughts. Um, it is a cool idea. I would totally use this in my sales um, way of selling a property. This could be your beautiful dream glamping environment. Slash, however, if I took this on, I would think now I'm a landlord. Now I run a, a B, you know, I run a B and B, and I don't really want to run a B and B. Yeah, somebody else in this string said, "Yeah, just lease the land to an Airbnb operator. There you let go. them do it all. That would be cool." So from a number standpoint, you can't beat this. You know, it's the new bed and breakfast. You know, bed and breakfast suck, I think. You know, it's the old crickety floors. There's six other couples in the whole place. It's a- There's doilies. Some old, some old ladies <laughs> making a doilies. breakfast. The breakfast is terrible. <laughs> everybody knows what everybody else is doing it's at all hours of night. Scones and tea. Use your imagination there. <laughs> and so it's just, and there's one bathroom for eight people in the whole thing. That's, there, that's not, there's nothing glamorous about that at all. Some people just think it's quaint, and depending on who you talk to, I'm, I've st slept in my last BMB, grandchildren or not. I'll tell you that. So, but the, the cost he's issuing a lot of directives <laughs> here. Golly, <laughs> I'm talking to Bill par uh, to Bill. I'm talking to Jill partially. Okay, uh, here too, not just to the camera. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. When you break down the cost structure of uh, both of those scenarios. Like a big hotel, crazy expensive to operate and to build. An Airbnb, very expensive to operate uh, and certainly expensive to build and maintain. And then you take a vacant piece of land, put a bunch of tents on it, albeit nice tents, and and put up a great website. You know that's what these uh, that's what the millennials want. They want an experience. And they're not afraid to pay. So you're assu uh, assuming you're charging $135 to $150 a night for those three cost options. Uh, you know, number one's a hotel, number two is a bed and breakfast, number three is a, a tent with a compost toilet and a kayak. You can't beat the third as an operator. And if you've got a good piece of property, Jill, have, Jill and I have several right now where this would work. It gets me thinking. You know, there's no better way to buy a property for $25,000, $30,000, maybe $50,000 at the tip top, $50,000 at the top. And then lease it out, uh, master lease it out to a, a Airbnb operator for let's say five thousand a month, or some number like that. I buy a piece of property for twenty five thousand dollars and lease it out for five thousand dollars a month. That cap rate's in insane, insanely positive. So I, I'm all for this. But what Jill said, I don't want to be a landlord. This is a land lease deal for us, not an operator deal. What were all? What were the majority of the comments that people were making? Did they that, were like, I want to do this? Well, it was everything from what I just said from a land lease perspective to we're already doing this, like uh, somebody said, in, in a pasture that we're not using on the farm that we live in now. These are all Land Academy members. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and then people are talking about the experiences th that they had staying in these places, mm -hmm. and they're all positive. You know, I would absolutely, I would do it right now. For mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't actually, within reason, look at the price tag. If it was located some. Toward, you know, near fly fishing, let's say, you know, I'd book it for us for three days, probably bring our RV there. If it sucked, we would just leave like we've done in the past. <laughs> say, you know what? We're good. We don't want to refund. This sucks. See ya. What? Not to be Debbie Downer, <laughs> but what, like, was like a, what was the general consensus about zoning? Did that even yes. come up? So it came up and said, okay. uh, somebody from Oregon said, I tried to do this. And the state of Oregon wants no part of this. And then that somebody from really Northern wrong. Arizona said, I am doing this. And the state of Arizona is very excited for me. There you go. Hopefully they'll catch on. Do they, do they, I wonder if they see it as a way of, it's like, it's a step closer to, um, you know, mobiles or, you know, if it's, I wonder if the states that don't like it or the counties that don't like it are afraid if it's a step towards tiny houses or mobiles, which they don't want, which is dumb, by the way. I agree with you We completely. need more affordable living so everywhere. I don't, yeah. I don't think that this Not falls less. into any category yet. Very much like building a shed, putting a shed on your property, unless you're in an HOA, in all the places that I've looked, there, there's no regs on it. Mm -hmm. You can put a shed up. And it, you know, you can you live in the shed? Probably not, according to the regs. Does anybody live your know, uh, know you're living there? 
Probably not. It depends on how big your property so, is. Oh, can you park an RV on most places and live in there? Hell no. That's all caught up. The regulators have caught up with it. People abused it. And now there's new rules. Mm -hmm. But we're in a, you know, like everything yesterday, we talked about everything changes all the time or two mm -hmm. days ago, whatever it was. This whole thing is brand new. There's unregulated. Mm -hmm. So I think you should set something up. They don't know what to do. When you call planning and zoning and say, hey, uh, can I get a camping permit? I, they don't know what to do. There's nothing on their computer screen to click. You know what's great about that? <laughs> for people like me, because I'm a, let's ask for forgiveness, not me permission. Too. I am too. <laughs> I'm like, can I hang up and go, green light. <laughs> Nobody could say I can't do it. Jill and I had a <laughs> cabin in Crown King, Arizona for a lot of years, many, many years. And people would just camp anywhere and, and happily. And it was a beautiful situation. I don't care. I don't care either. I, I think care. it's Let great. Pitch it. a tent in my driveway. Especially, you know what? Let's think about this, everyone. If you got 20 acres or more, <laughs> yeah. who really cares? I don't care. I remember talking to people selling 40 acres in Texas. I said, look. And good, at number one with this county, by the way, good luck getting somebody on the phone. They only work four hours a week. The other days are a sheriff, and then they're a judge on Fridays. You know, whatever. It's that kind of a, a thing. And number two, short of putting a casino on it, I'm not sure anyone's <laughs> going to notice. <laughs> That's exactly what I used to say today, which is have a laugh and go, this is the greatest thing. I said, you're right. This is one of the beautiful things about Texas. West Texas, have fun. <laughs> so there you go. That's my last comment. I had a, I, I, I'll close on this. I had a conversation not that long ago with somebody in Arkansas because we bought a bunch of back, back tax property. And in every group of back tax property, there's like two or three where it just blows your hair back. Like, wow, these are great properties. So I called the, the planning and zoning and said, what's possible on this property? And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know, maybe build a house, maybe put a mobile. I don't know. I'm not sure. He said, all of those are fine. You don't need to ask us. That's great. And that was it. Love that. Happy you could join us today. Five days a week, you can find us here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show, well, it's Jack Thursday, and I'm going to talk about how to calculate your cash on cash return on a land deal. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Need to send out a few thousand offers to property owners like us? Check out offers in the number two owners.com. So that's offers to owners.com. No setup fees, free mail merge, exceptional service, and now including just released for everyone concierge data and pricing. It's awesome. Give offers to owners a call today. Is this like that spreadsheet that you used to have to make for somebody that they could not, they didn't know how to do the ROI percentage? And you made a little chart for them. Their names, their initials are MP. <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember MP not having, not being able to set up a little, it was like six boxes. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly okay. who you're talking about. And so does everybody else. Cause you used to be part of this group. The vast majority. Oh, of them, not me. <laughs> not you. No, not me. Listeners. Listeners might've been part of MP's group, <laughs> but he couldn't do this. I remember him going, emailing or calling me or something to ask you for that little chart to send over so you could plug in some numbers. Is it this thing or is it different? I'm going to cover like six different numbers that people use to analyze the performance of their businesses right. and why five of them are stupid. Okay. And why one of them matters. All right. So you're going to make us wait. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. We would love to connect with you tomorrow on Clubhouse, by the way. Join me and usually Jack every Thursday at one o'clock Pacific time in the Land Investing Club. We are, are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 